We're at the 25th Croix with Louis, who is the uh, yeah. from Hawaii. Yes. And you're, you're, I'm going to let you describe the group you're with, and you're also the work that you're doing. Because we just interviewed you, uh, we just uh, discussed with you the interview over at the posters, and then we want to talk about your young investigator status and, and how sure. you're doing. So um, I'm currently a research liaison for the... Give your full name first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. sorry. So I'm uh, Louis Margang Cuanco. I'm currently a... Uh, I'm originally from the Philippines, but mm -hmm. I'm a research liaison between the Hawaii Center for AIDS uh, with Dr. Cecilia Shikuma as the principal investigator mm -hmm. and um, the University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital yes. mm -hmm. um, with Dr. Marisa Alejandria mm -hmm. as our uh, principal investigator on that site. Mm -hmm. So we are doing a uh, research collaboration between the two institutions where um, we are going, we're investigating the neuro neurologic status of the HIV patients in the Philippines and correlating this with the immune activation markers in their blood. Um, but that's totally actually fairly different from what uh, I'm presenting today, uh, what I had presented today at the poster, which is a, a poster on the uh, immune dysregulation in our HIV cohort in um, Hawaii Center for AIDS, and we found out that the negative checkpoint receptors, PD-1, them 3 digit um, that are expressed in uh, CD8 and CD4 T cells are correlating with uh, lean tissue and fat loss in our HIV population. So that was a fairly interesting finding that I, I'm very honored to have been able to present so here so at the We developed that for a diet program. What? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wish it was that simple, oh, right. but uh, obviously, it's a lot. There's a lot of badness associated and linked to these right. negative checkpoints. Not, this is not a good thing. Not no, a good it's thing. not. It's not a good thing. So the work that you do, and, and tell me more about the markers that you're working on. Then. So immune dysregulation, or? right. So this is actually done at Dr. and Lovus uh, Lisham and Lovus mm -hmm. Laboratory, uh, pri primarily by. Uh, our collab, um, our researchers there, um, Glenn Chu and um, Brooks, and um, these are essentially markers on the surface of the T lymphocytes, CD8 and CD4, and um, they are able to quantify the the uh, the population of those uh, CD8 cells that are expressing PD1 or program cell death one, mm -hmm. um, TIGIT and TIM3. And um, these um, receptors are also actually being investigated in other fields such as cancer. Right, that's and, a big one in cancer. Right, yeah. uh, they are, um, and uh, hopefully, and I think a lot of uh, also investigators are, are looking into what interventions can be done because these are actually senescent markers and exhaustion markers, meaning um, in chronically infected HIV patients, people, um, if you have cells that have these, they are not functioning properly. They're not doing their job in checking mm -hmm. HIV replication. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, we want to, to, um, to know whether um, there are ways that to, um, to bring back their function. You know, and and that so potentially lose these markers or have a monoclonal antibody or stuff like that. So yeah, cool. <laughs> so what got you into the field? Well, I'm from the Philippines. I graduated from medical school in 2010. Um, it's actually a really interesting journey for me. Um, I uh, I did an HIV prevalence study back in Manila. Um, recruited 408 men having sex with men um, near the bars and tested them for HIV. So it was initially an epidemiologic work on mm -hmm. HIV. And um, it has always been interesting for me of the, the actual prevalence in Manila because we back then, people are saying, oh no, we don't have a problem with HIV. It's very low. It's less than 1%. But to everyone's surprise, 48 out of the 406 that we tested were HIV positive, giving us an, a prevalence of 11% mm -hmm. in Manila. And that was really a high way back in 2010. Was that the first they uh, defined that or, or discovered that? It was the first time that 
we were able to find such a high number because we went specifically in the oh, area we the, yeah. where people go out to, you know, go to yeah. the clubs. Essentially, I was inspired when I went to UCLA for a month for an infectious disease rotation there. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, Dr. Judith Courier was one of my supervisors back in 2008. And my friends took me to the corner of Santa Monica and San Vicente and West Hollywood. And we went um, late night for pizza. And I saw this HIV testing van outside and I'm like, we should do this in the Philippines. So mm -hmm. that was my first project and the rest was history. I had a vacation in Hawaii one um, back in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, and I was fortunate to meet Dr. Shikuma and uh, she offered me a job mm -hmm. <laughs> essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is probably more your positive experience. What would you say your negative experience would be? Um, the negative experience is essentially when I was putting this project together in Manila, we did not have funding. Mm -hmm. Essentially, there was no funding and I was paying out of pocket. The van that we used was my family's L300. It's like I think an old Toyota or something that we put a banner outside. I was paying for the patient's ELISAs oh until my, my yes, until my and and I went to the global fund office in Manila begging for rapid HIV test kits uh -huh. and which they, they gave. And so these were the challenges and people were saying, you know, you I don't think you can do it. It's just too hard financially. Mm -hmm. And second, it was emotionally draining. Because some yeah. of these people were actually my friends testing positive before my eyes and yeah. and my my very good friend who was a medical technologist doing the rapid testing his ex actually tested positive in front of him and so the first uh -huh. night after we have recruited the first 30 plus patients and four or five people tested positive i remember myself walking and literally emotionally drained and yeah, thinking can I still do this? Because one of them were my yeah. friends. Yeah, and, it's, it's hard to disconnect. And, and excuse me. Some people have a hard time disconnecting from the, the situation, the, the emotional aspects of it. I can tell you in the early days, a lot of doctors failed to keep it going. And they literally, I mean, one doctor broke down on a stage when she was giving a lecture after she's talking about 400 people. It, it's really devastating. 400 deaths. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, the... Um, the reason why I'm still here doing this work and uh, do, uh, bringing our research collaboration to the Philippines is that I think there's a lot of work that can be done. We are having a massive explosion of HIV in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, in two months alone last year, I believe 1,900 people tested positive in August and September of 2017. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot. That's, that's really um, a high number for, for the Philippines. We don't have integrase inhibitors as first line in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And my dream is for, for that to be first line and for us to be, um, to be able to catch up because obviously we know the side effects of efavirenz, mm -hmm. which is still part of our first line regimen mm -hmm. in the Philippines. So a lot needs to be done and our, our work in the Philippines is certainly a small step to hopefully um, helping and addressing this. Is the Philippines considered a uh, middle-income country? You know, I haven't uh, checked. I, I, it's low it to make, middle It makes a big income. difference. They've, apparently, they've broken it down even yet further than low, middle, and high. Uh, there's other designations. And I don't know exactly what that means. I'm I need to find out because yeah. it's really important to, uh, to understand that because then there's certain things you can get. Yeah, I uh, was, and certainly get it a better value. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, I, I was surprised to see that they have integrase inhibitor. There's a poster, uh, two posters before me that says uh, they have a dolutegravir in Botswana. And I said they have integrase inhibitors as first line in Botswana. Why can't we do it in the Philippines? And, and I really hope that, that they come soon because a lot of patients are... Um, I'm actually a physician, so patients are actually, um, you know, telling me that their their concern really are the effects of, of uh, the retrovirals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where do you go next? Do you stay with what you're doing? Uh, do you feel comfortable with it? And well, I'm very happy. Um, I love research. I'm. It's it's really my passion um, doing this. Um, but uh, my dream is to become an infectious disease specialist, to be uh, to be fellowship 
a fellow uh, to be able to complete my fellowship and um, to further equip me and to be, to be able to do more research mm -hmm. um, and, and not have to pay for it yourself sorry and not have to pay for it yourself <laughs> and so be able to that write was pretty grants. noble of you that was pretty noble I remember really having to push a patient's um, wheelchair and, and bring them to that taxi like we it was really Mm -hmm. groundwork, literally grassroots work, and yeah. I'm really proud of that, and I, of, of course I can't take full credit. Everyone um, in the team really helped, um, yeah. helped um, my, but my parents. Uh, but this is, well, this is important because if you feel this passion to do it, the reason you're in it now, you have to find a way to disconnect yourself or yeah. disassociate yourself from some of the drama, and I know that it's for your know. friends, but at some point, you have to harden yourself to that extent, because yeah. it's it's difficult. It's 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 you can't do it. You can't do it any other way. I don't know how a lot of people get through cancer because it's so deadly. Now, I, I, HIV is a lot different today, or it can be if people are treated. Yeah. So you're doing the very work that needs to be done most. That's why I, I really told myself I cannot be an oncologist, especially in the Philippines, because mm -hmm. people will sell their houses to to buy to chemotherapy. Buy, yeah sell their yeah. carabaos, yeah. what they used to, to, uh, to farm, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's really, you know, but as you mentioned, um, I have to learn, and we, I guess we all have to learn how to kind of have that uh, the, distance this, and disconnect exactly. a little bit, but still be in compassion. You, you have to be enough, to you patients. have to be engaged enough with the emotion of it to remain committed, but you also have to disconnect enough to keep yeah. yourself sane. Yes, yes, you know? of course. And healthy, and mentally healthy. Well, I appreciate I, I appreciate you. everything you're doing. I want to hear more from you at the conferences. You have to look me up because yes. we often do, you know, catch ups oh. with where you're going, what you were doing, and, and okay. uh, what you're doing now. Hopefully next year I'll be. Back. You'll, you'll be back with bags full of money and the grants you wrote. <laughs> I hope. I, hope. I, I really hope. So we could share it to, to yeah. our um, um, collaborators and mentors in the Philippines. Thank you. So thank, thank you so, you so much. much thank you so much.